funny also because um Hiroski said something of you know why he had Chris Foss design the, the ships but it was spaceships at that time where he said they just looked like refrigerators yeah do you think he was mainly talking about kit bashing or just just the overall design aesthetics I think the kit bashing was part of it I don't know if he would like specify that but that contributed to that mm-hmm. appearance and that's that's another thing too like kit bashing is something which I don't really like I understand the economical and like time saving reasons for it and it can be done really well yeah it, it can be like if you see in space 1999 like some of those ships it's because they're working to they're still working to like a very interesting and striking silhouette yeah a lot of the time and then they're just sort of i don't know putting doodads on there to add detail which i guess we should explain what kit bashing is yeah in case anyone listening doesn't know it's uh basically where you have you know you're building a model of something and you take a lot of parts from other model kits to fill out the design i guess Mm-hmm. you a see lot it a like, lot in star wars yeah like in the, in the star wars films there's like the small little pieces that you know you add for detail that they call greeblies i think mm-hmm. i know in uh in star crash like it, it, it gets taken just to like use, next level they didn't just use like the little piece of the models they use the piping from like the trays like the, mm-hmm. that the they model would come kit on. trays i will say uh, that when they use those uh armando valcada i think he had left production by that point so they didn't have Mm. the special effects guy on the movie by that point so they were just trying to do what they could Mm -hmm. yeah that city set there's like this crane shot where it's going right into one of those (laughs) one of those little plastic frames or outlines Mm -hmm. yeah Um, but but kit bashing i feel like it was easier and and it made a lot of ships really took like design down a notch mm-hmm. um, because then you think back to older science fiction movies where the, it was just a lot about the silhouette the, the design the shape of it you think of the martian mm-hmm. war machines from war of the worlds yeah um or the you know the c57d from forbidden planet and back then it was and it was interesting you know you have a lot of smooth surfaces mm-hmm. of these of these ships i don't know if that was easier it was just that was a little more forward thinking because Mm-hmm. now we're getting to a point where space flight resembles more something like rock literally the elon musk's rocket ship looks like rocket ship xm yeah which yeah. is insane and really awesome whereas uh, jeff bezos's ship looks like something out of flesh gordon no <laughs> no no i can't believe that movie looks as good as it does <laughs> uh, it, it just hired all the right people yeah but kit bashing i think even in star wars I like, you know, you can say the shapes are nice, but the textures, the detail adds to the scale. That's what it, that's what it helps right. with. But like the Star Destroyers take, for instance, I kind of imagine sometimes what if their surface had been more, in a more, more smooth areas, at least mm-hmm. a little bit darker or like different color, like not just white, because there's so much stuff that just looks like white, even if there's some color accents on some ships and in, in Star Wars, it's just a lot of it's just gray and white, chunky, rough, chunky surfaces yeah. with a lot of kit bashing. And I feel like design kind of takes a back seat in, in a sense. Or it, it becomes harder to kind of get a purchase on what the ship looks like sometimes. I mean, you still have the silhouette, of course, but it, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard because it's not like that strong unless it's beginning like beginning to Death end Star. design. Yeah. Or um, even in uh, in the prequels, I think they, they tone that down because I, I guess like it's yeah. easier to render smooth surfaces. Some of those I ships think, are really cool. And I think there was design philosophy in those films. At least these were an older, more elegant time where it was when things mm-hmm. had been, I guess, not falling apart. In, right. In terms it's more of like, opulent. And yeah. So yeah. I think that was also part of it. But again, like the designs, the design work in those films is really good. The the ships and those i love like i really like those like the naboo cruiser the silvery uh yeah i love that ship ship yeah mm-hmm. it's really really cool um and then like the pod racers are they're basically just like these engines they just mm-hmm. it's just like an engine with a little like yeah like a chariot carriage. behind yeah them, yeah. yeah it is <laughs> and then something at like like the same time around star wars was the black hole where they didn't kit bash at all I, mm-hmm. I don't think at least may, maybe i don't know if the palomino model did but the cygnus was all fabricated over a long amount of time and at probably great cost i think mm-hmm. using a lot of metal 
to making all the lattice work and just all these other shapes that they had to fabricate. And I, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, not having that detail, not being able to add all that detail, what if you made like a smoother ship? I mean, you could add like something that without kit bashing, if you had the time to add details on it. That's kind of the way that the Cygnus looks, because there is a lot of small mm -hmm. detail, but it's all originating from the design philosophy of the film. It's not sort of, yeah. you know, a, a, like a, a ransom note, <laughs> you know, just right. like cutting up, you know, all these things and yeah pasting it on and yeah, painting it yeah peter ellenshaw you can see in his concept paintings yeah they're very much like his designs his style just the lattice work and the way these antennas are and everything and i think like a ship from this island earth mm -hmm. is a, the spaceship in that one it's smooth there is an interesting kind of like texture on it that you can notice um it, it's smooth though and, and it makes me wonder it's like okay you know, yeah, if you added like some lines, you know, on there, maybe it would it would be more convincing as in like a scale sense. Yeah. But at the same time, I like the idea of like a smooth surface on like an alien ship. You know, yeah. it's it's all to do with like how much you know you're balancing like realism with a commitment to just making something fantastic. Um, so I don't know, kit bashing, I think it's it's overdone. Yeah, it has its place and I get why it's done and it can be done really well and look really cool. But it's yeah, I, I agree. Like it is something that was done too often in the period of time when miniature spaceships were something that we saw on screen a lot. I think the first place that I heard kit bashing I mean, I, I had known what it was for a while just watching special features of, of older science fiction movies, but the first place that I heard somebody kind of speak out against kit bashing or talk about, I guess, the limits of it was, um, I guess, the special features for The Thing, the John Carpenter mm. thing. And they were talking about designing and building the the saucer for that. Just It's just oh, an right. opening shot, really, and about all the detail that went into that. And that's not a kit bashed ship um mm -hmm. and it's it's simple in some ways but there's still an elegance to it and they use like the way that they use lights on the miniature and, yeah. and like how they film at multiple passes and it's pretty smooth like overall but the designers who worked on that it was a small crew that built that ship and, and shot it and stuff but they were kind of talking about lamenting the excess of kit bashing and what mm. you lose when you go to that well too many times you lose yeah, the integrity of design and just being able to think in terms of building from the ground up and even using other things to to suggest detail, different textures on a smooth surface, maybe, yeah. or, or like really thinking in terms of like, okay, why would there be detail here? And what would that look like, you know, as a miniaturization or, or something cropping up out of this design that we've already made and not taking something from somewhere else and then trying to fit it in um, yeah. or just like putting junk like on the surfaces. And, and I think that was just a lot of like the people who are getting into movie making and just thinking like, oh, okay, this is what they do. So we're right. going to do that. And then that influences design. Like it's not even making models. Like also I just see a lot of designs that just the drawings of, of ships that just look kit bashed. Mm -hmm. The saucer from the John Carpenter's The Thing, that's a, it is, it is a great design. It, it's symmetrical. Like you can tell, yeah, there were, these details these things uh, like fit together um even though you barely get to see it but it's still really well designed 